Mr. Jason Moll from the University of um, Tasmania is going to discuss his uh, research on the effect of transverse abdominus thickness and activation on the prevalence of exercise-related transient abdominal pain. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'd first like to just start with acknowledging my uh, Honourable Supervisor, Mrs Murray Louise Bird, who's in the front here. So she's actually presenting tomorrow, so go and get around her presentation. Um, so as just stated, my honours research has been on the exercise-related transient abdominal pain, which today I'll refer to as ETAP. And you'll probably know it more commonly as the running or the side stitch. Now, previous research has actually shown that about 40 to 60% of the physically active population experience ETAP sometimes um, during a normal training year. And of these people, it um, is detrimental to performance for about 50% of those. So, previous research has also found, um, this is by Morton, who's also from here in Queensland, has actually proposed the theory that um, the cause of ETAP is irritation of the parietal peritoneum. Um, okay, so the, uh, there are a couple of influences, so age, training intensity, training status, um, exercise type have been shown to be influencing factors, however, um, those stated up on the, um, on the board there have been shown to have no influence. Now, interestingly, there hasn't actually been any um, studies done on the actual ab abdominal musculature in regard to the prevalence or the severity of ETAP. Now, we all know the role of transverse abdominus, as Britta actually uh, identified before, as um, increasing the intra-abdominal pressure through tensioning the thoracolumbar fascia and therefore very simpl simplistically increasing the core and spinal stabilisation. Um, and we think that this, if you have good control over the transversus abdominis and other um, abdominal muscles, this may actually lead to a decrease in the pain um, due to de decreased movement of the abdominal contents within, within the abdominal cavity. Now, so this brings us to our aims um, of the study and they were to identify whether core musculature and in, and in particular transversus abdominis influences the prevalence of ETAP. Now we looked at this via two ways. We looked at the Salmon test, which is a five stage graded exercise test, um, which has been um, instructed in Ferries in Greenwood 2007, and also using ultrasound um, imaging to look at transverse abdominus thickness change between resting and a contracted state. Uh, we also looked at both sides as well. Now, the, the cohort we actually used, we got 50 recreational to, to elite runners. Um, following these two tests, we got them to fill out a um, questionnaire regarding the prevalence, severity, and location of the, um, the ETAP they experienced and also got them to fill out just their normal training uh, regime. From there, we then put them into four different subgroups, depending on the frequency of the ETAP they actually experienced, and these groups were um, those who experienced it weekly, monthly, yearly, and also those who are asymptomatic of ETAP. Now, as we can see here, um, in regard to the Salmon test, that with the asymptomatic group, they actually um, had recorded scores of about three times greater than those who were in the weekly group and also about twice, uh, two times greater than those who, had, um, who were found to be in the yearly group as well. Now, in regard to the ultrasound imaging, we found that there was no significant difference um, for the change between, uh, for the thickness change between the groups and also obviously there was no correlation found for transverse abdominus thickness change and the Salmon test. And we think this is due to the fact that um, it might have been possibly internal obliques that were also involved in the Salmon test. Um, so it would have been a good idea to actually uh, measure transverse abdominus thickness and also internal oblique thickness as well. Now, our conclusion was that um, strength and control of abdominal musculature as measured by the Salmon test is an influence of the ETAP prevalence. Now this is quite an exciting finding due to the fact that um, we can now go off and do some extra research 
um, into the effects of a core stability program, intervention program for those who experience ETAP quite, re uh, quite frequently. And we can also go on to do some validation of the Salmon test involving um, surface and intramuscular EMG and also ultrasound whilst they're doing the Salmon test to actually identify which muscles are actually being used um, and to what capacity. Thank you.